Hello everyone, it's time for me to review the final game in the Naughty Dog Crash Bandicoot series, and that game is Crash Team Racing. Now let me just say, I'm a big Mario Kart fan, and I have been ever since I got Mario Kart Wii as a kid. I've played every single Mario Kart game, except for the new Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Which is really just the same thing as Mario Kart 8, except they fixed the problems 8 had, and added some characters. One of them being King Boo, who is one of my favorite Mario characters of all time. I will talk about the Mario Kart games, but the bottom line is, the Mario Kart games are looked at as the best kart racing games out there. Meaning there would be knockoff and spin-off kart racing games just like Mario Kart. I never played this game as a kid, and one of the only things I remember about this game is playing a demo of it in Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. In fact, one of the only other things I remember about this game is my friend having a Crash Team Racing toy. So is this game just another one of those Mario Kart clones? Believe it or not, it isn't. This game is honestly one of the best racing games I've ever played, and I'm honestly kind of shocked that it is. So let's get started with the story. Yeah, there's an adventure mode. The only other racing game with a plot that came out at the time of this game was Diddy Kong Racing. I already have a complaint. You have to wait on the main menu to see the opening cutscene. Why? It was like that in Crash 1, but they fixed it in Crash 2 and Crash 3. Why go back to having to wait on the main menu? When I first started playing this game, I had no clue what was going on. And when I saw the new villain, I was like, who's that? It was only when I was halfway through the story, I left the game on the title screen while doing something, and I was surprised to see an opening cutscene. The cutscene should play when you select new game for adventure mode. I shouldn't have to wait at the main menu. It was a problem that Naughty Dog once fixed, but they brought back for some reason. The story begins with a new villain named Nitrous Oxide challenging the Earth to a race. If Earth wins, he'll leave the planet alone. If Earth loses, he'll turn the planet into a parking lot. Alright. What's interesting about this story is you can actually play it as other Crash Bandicoot characters. I thought that was really cool, and I would have played as Dingo Dial, but this is my first time playing the story, so I'm sticking with Intermediate. You're brought to a hub world where Akua Ku starts talking to you with horrible lip syncing. Welcome to the Adventure Arena. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. From there on, you have to earn trophies by winning races, and once you earn enough trophies, you face a boss. Yeah, a boss battle in a racing game. I know Diddy Kong Racing did the same thing, but still, this isn't very common. Now onto the control, which I think is pretty solid. You hold X to accelerate, hit circle to use items, and hit R1 to drift. And to get a boost from that drift, you have to hit L1 when the tire smoke is black. The cart feels pretty heavy, and depending on who you play as, the cart can feel extremely heavy. When you drift, I feel like Crash jumps too far in the direction you're drifting. It took me a while to get used to it, but once I did, I was chaining together drifts and boosts on specific parts of each track. And if you hit R1 while going off a ramp, you get a boost when you land. The weapons and power-ups consist of tracking missiles, bowling bombs, power shields, explosive crates, embryos beakers, Akua Ku and Uku Uka masks, turbos, entropy clocks, and warp orbs. And other battle mode specific power-ups include invisibility and super engines. All of these items are great, and some can even be avoided. Like the TNT, if you tap R1 enough times, the TNT will fall off your cart. Also, if you collect 10 Wumpa Fruit, your maximum speed is increased and the items become more powerful. I also really like how if you're playing as a villain, Aku Aku is changed to Uka Uka. It's a small change, but I think it's really cool. The races themselves are never uneventful, and there are times I never touched first place only to steal the race at the very end. It's crazy stuff. The bosses consist of Ripperoo, Papu Papu, Komodo Joe, Pinstripe, and Anoxide. The boss battles are okay, but not great. Basically what happens is the boss immediately takes first place and starts throwing a ton of projectiles behind him which are difficult to avoid. However, when you beat a boss, I assumed that you unlock them in arcade mode, but you don't. You end up unlocking them by beating the entire game. Which is fine, but still, I prefer to beat a boss and then unlock them. There are so many other things to do besides racing. There are time trials, just like in Crash 3, that reward you with a sapphire, gold, or platinum time relic. Doing all of these time trials successfully unlocks the Dark Nefarious Tropy Ghost Races. And doing all of them successfully unlocks the Anoxide Ghost Races. 
There are CTR token races where you have to find the hidden C, T, and R letters and win to get a CTR token. There are special arena modes for each hub world that has you grabbing crystals under a specific time limit. Doing all of these other game modes and beating the story unlocks the rest of the roster, which is amazing. And consists of all of the bosses, Doc Nefarious Troppy, Penta Penguin, he was the penguin in Crash 3, and Fake Crash. I'm not so sure about Penta Penguin. When he gets a mask, it shows up as Uka Uka, but he uses a Kua Ku. Which side are you on, Penta? You can't unlock an Oxide, but the rest of the roster is so good that it doesn't really matter. In fact, the only characters that are missing from previous games are Koala Kong and Dr. Enbrio. It's funny because Enbrio's beakers are in the game, but he isn't. There are so many characters to play as that I've played as all of them in arcade mode. But no matter how many characters you unlock, your opponents never change from the standard 8 that you start with. Meaning you'll never race against fake crash in a race because the CPUs always pick the same 8. It's not a big deal, but sometimes I like to race against other characters. The tracks in this game are really fun. Each character has their own track and they're a blast to race and even explore. There are shortcuts in the tracks which require a bit of searching, but once you find them, you get rewarded by almost instantly getting first place. There is a battle mode and a versus mode on the main menu, along with the arcade and cup game modes which is basically racing either one track or a whole circuit. All of these other game modes are optional, but even these are pretty fun. I typically hate doing this stuff in other racing games, even Mario Kart, but here the satisfaction you get when you beat a time trial by 5 seconds is amazing. However, there are some more problems. You can only play the battle mode and versus mode with multiplayer. You can't play them with just single player. Sure, single players have the adventure mode, but sometimes I want to take a break from the racing and just play battle mode. But nope, you need someone else. That being said, multiplayer is incredibly fun, whether you're racing to see who gets first place in arcade mode or battling it out in battle mode, you're in for a good time. Now it's time to talk about the ending. So if you get all of the keys, race an Oxide, and beat him, he agrees to leave the planet alone, but still claims he's the fastest unless you collect all of the time relics and race him again. If you beat the game 100% and race him again, he leaves and the credits tell you what happens to Crash and the rest of the characters. By beating the game 100%, you also unlock the Naughty Dog scrapbook, which is awesome. The scrapbook shows you concept art for Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot at E3, Crash in Japan, the Crash Bandicoot launch party, and Naughty Dog's office expansion of Fall 1999. They even show Jason Rubin's dog Morgan visiting Insanity Beach. Crash Team Racing is an amazing game. I know I said the game has certain problems, but they really aren't that bad. The satisfaction you get when you steal a race, or chain together boosts, or hit incredibly high speeds. The weight of the cart as you race through the tracks feels realistic. The items you use are incredibly useful. The way the soundtrack keeps you immersed throughout all of the tracks. The way the hectic racing keeps you on your toes throughout the whole race, even if you're in first place. The way the momentum shifts when you hit a jump boost, it's just so good. And for the time, I honestly think this game is better than Mario Kart 64. I'd even say this game is better than Mario Kart Double Dash that came out four years later. Naughty Dog truly is one of the best video game companies of all time. They changed when the video game market changed and have produced hit after hit after hit after hit. But the fact that they already created an amazing trilogy of games featuring an extremely likable character and then created a racing game that is one of the best racing games of all time, it just blows my mind. This game shouldn't have worked, it should have been nothing more than a Mario Kart clone. But it controls so well, it plays so well, and it's so much more when it doesn't have to be. Now like I've said in my Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy review, I don't really care for remakes. But this is one remake that I would really like to see. Imagine this. You take Crash Team Racing, recreate it in HD with online multiplayer. It would be great, and if it's done right, it could even be a rival to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I don't know if Vicarious Visions can recreate something like this, but they did a good job with the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Maybe they could do it, and maybe it would be as great as the original, one can only predict. This game is the cherry on top of the Naughty Dog Crash Bandicoot series that is by far one of the best video game series.